Welcome back to the channel everybody. Today we will be restoring the original Xbox controller, also known as the Duke. Now this is a force to be reckoned with. This controller launched with the original Xbox in November of 2001. Looking at it, it feels as though it was inspired from other PC controllers of the era. Eventually, this controller was replaced with the Xbox Controller S, which was a much smaller form factor. We'll start here by removing the seven Phillips head screws from the back side of the controller. Now we can split the case halves and get a look at the condition of the inside of this controller. As you can see, the controller is quite dirty, but all of the internal parts appear to be in good condition without any damage or corrosion. Again, it's quite obvious that the silicone membrane and buttons are in desperate need of cleaning, but all said, I think that this will turn out nice. To completely disassemble the D-pad, we will use a small flathead screwdriver to pry down on the clips, releasing the base. We then have access to both sides of the silicone membrane. Here we have one final membrane to remove, and then the joysticks simply lift off of the base. We can now unplug the connector for the dual vibration motors. To do this, I'm using a bit from the iFixit toolkit to lift up on the clip and then unplug each connector. Important to use caution here as these connectors are fragile and could easily be damaged, so no need to force anything. There are four Phillips head screws holding the main board into the lower half of the controller. Once removed, we can lift the board straight out. Each of the dual vibration motors have four small Phillips head screws holding them in place. We're going to go ahead and clean up the memory card bezel here before removing off of the main board. To do this, I'm using Q-tips and Windex. Now cleaning the main board with compressed air, followed by 99% IPA. Here we are hitting all of the areas that are contacted by the silicone membrane. As previously mentioned, the memory card bezel slips off the main board. Here we're going to clean all of the buttons with Q-tips and Windex. This is a bit of a tedious process, but we'll continue to just keep wiping these down until we get all of the grime removed. As we wrap up cleaning these buttons, it's now time to move on to the shell of the controller. We'll use the same process here with Windex, a soft bristle toothbrush, and Q-tips. This groove right here always seems to be the worst part of a controller and holds ton of grime, but that said, when it's clean and the controller is reassembled, it's always so satisfying to see. To clean the silicone membrane, we'll use Q-tips and Windex, and then for the actual small black contacts, we'll use Q-tips and IPA. Now that we have the controller completely torn down and clean, we can begin the reassembly process. The dual vibration motors are now inserted in the lower case half, followed by the Phillips head screws holding them in place. I always try to mention this in my videos, it's always best to start the screw counterclockwise to align the threads and prevent stripping.
Continuing on with reassembly, we can put the memory card bezel back in place, as well as slip in this piece that holds the wire in place. We can then combine this whole assembly with the lower half once again. The connectors for the dual vibration motors can now be plugged back in, and we'll reinstall the four Phillips head screws. Final step for this lower half will be to reinstall the thumbsticks. We now place the silicone membrane back on the D-pad and clip in the bracket holding it in place. This shell looks so much better now that it's clean, we'll go ahead and reinstall all of the buttons. These do all have alignment tabs, so they only go in one way. Again, nothing should be forced. We'll fit the silicone membrane back over top of the buttons. We can now bring the two halves of the controller back together and get ready to reinstall the seven Phillips head screws. Here's a quick look back at what this controller looked like before we started, and we're calling this project done. All in all, very happy with the way this turned out, and this controller is ready for years more of use. I'd like to thank you for watching this video, and as always, I look forward to interacting with you in the comment section below.